an interviewer at Google, the approach to evaluating a candidate's understanding of solid principles involves a mix of theoretical questions, practical coding tasks, and discussions on design decisions. The aim is to not only assess their knowledge but also gauge their ability to apply these principles in real-world scenarios. Here's a simulated QM for Sunday session that mirrors a typical Google-style interview focused on solid principles. Can you briefly explain what solid principles are and why they are important in software development? Hi, good morning. Good morning, Paula. Sure. SOLID is an acronym of five design principles. S stands for single responsibility. O stands for open closed. L stands for list curve substitution. I stands for interface segregation and D stands for dependency inversion. These principles guide developer in creating software that is easy to maintain, extend and understand by promoting modular, scalable and robust design. Thanks Abhinash, great explanation. Can you dive a bit deeper into the SRP single responsibility principle and provide an example where violating it might cause issues? The SRP single responsibility principle states that a class only have one region to change, meaning it should have only one job. Violating it leads to classes that are difficult to maintain and test. For instance, if a class handles right, both user authentication and data persistence, changes in database schema might require modify the class which is not related to authentication logic, right? It means that I can conclude here that this cl class might have more than one region to change and which is the violation of SRP principle, right? So this reflects that how you can design your class which would not violate your SRP and that is uh, definitely, definitely by segregating these two different kind of requirement into two different classes, right? That will help you to uh, make the compliant classes with SRP. I hope I'm clear. Let me know your opinion. Excellent. Now, let's move on to a practical task. Here's a piece of code that violates the open slash closed principle. Can you refactor this to comply with the OCP? All right. Let me explain to you the problem given in your code for refactoring. In class, area calculator um, calculates the area of different shape, right? Initially, it only supports a rectangle. But as the application grows, we need to add more and more shapes. Now look at your design. Now every time you add new shape, you need to modify this calculate area first method and it modifies your existing class area calculator also. This design violates the OCP, right? I hope you agree with me, okay? Because uh, in OCP, it is clearly stated that your existing class is closed for modification, but open for extension but in your i mean i just explained you right now only that in your design shared code i can see that for every addition of new shape you need to modify your existing class and that's why my statement earlier whatever i told you that this is violating ocp it is correct right now let's understand how you can solve this problem or i would say rather i would say that how you can refactor or modify your code such that it will uh, refactor in such a way that it should start complying with OCP principle. And for explaining that part, I would like to go step by step. Okay. So here is my step one. First you do is like create shape interface. This interface will declare a method called calculate area that every shapes derived from this shape interface or implement this shape interface will have to implement. This is the step one. The second step is refactor your rectangle class. I mean to say, make rectangle implement the shape interface. Step three is modify area calculator. Instead of working with a specific shape, it will now work with the shape interface, making it open for extension, but closed for modification. Am I right? I hope so, right? Let's move to the step four now. All right, so step four is validation of your refactor code. Now time to validate your refactor code for the new shape addition. Let's say add a new shape circle to demonstrate the extensibility of your refactor code. Now look at the uh, all these modification in your in, in this code I have shared you in the screen. 
Now look the first thing, which is just a interface, SAP interface created. The second one is there is a one concrete like implementation of this interface class, which is rectangle. In that you can see that uh, we have defined their own method implementation, which is calculate area. Then again, you have seen that we have modified, I mean refactored the area calculated class. And now my area calculated class is not directly depend on concrete classes. It depends on interface, which is SAP interface. As a parameter, you can see that in calculate area, right? And similarly for also, you can see that um, the next, which after addition of new shape like circle, how we have uh, implemented circle class, you can see in this image. So all these modification is refactor the code to the position where I can say that now your uh, refactored code is compliant with OCP principle and uh, which is a state, which states that it is open for mod, I mean extension, but definitely, definitely closed for modification, which definitely improve the code quality in terms of testability. Like it always, always, I mean, it has no side effect with existing code. It won't because you are not touching any existing code. So ideally in ideal scenario, it will not impact or produce any side effect unless until you use something which is uh, in your no new code based on the existing code where you are something modification or some, I mean, mysterious things you have done, then only you will get side effect of new implementation. Otherwise, most of the cases, 80 to 90% scenario, you have not touched anything on with existing code. So probably that would be a uh, sanitized code for you after this new addition and modification also. I hope you are clear and you now able to understand that how you can um, modify the code which violates the OCP to make them compliance with OCP. I see your approach and it's well implemented. Now, how would you apply the Liskov substitution principle in the context of this design? All right, so Liskov substitution principle ensure that subclasses can replace their base classes without affecting the correctness of the program. In this context, it means any subclass of the modified classes should work seamlessly without breaking the functionality. For instance, if we have a base class shape and a derived class circle or rectangle, anything, in both case, the method that works with shape should also works with circle or rectangle without any issue, which primarily happening already happening in this set of class. So I hope that my this refactored code is already compliant with LSP, Liskov Substitution Principle. Let me know your opinion. Moving on to interface segregation. How can bloated interfaces lead to poor software design and how does this help mitigate this? All right, so in fact, ISP is really a logical way to simplify your code. Now coming back to your question, bloated interfaces force classes to implement methods they don't use leading to code that that is hard to understand and maintain also, right? ISP advocates for lean interface, thin interface, not the thick interface, so that classes only implement what they need. This result in a cleaner, more modular design. I hope I'm making sense here. Great insights. To wrap up, can you discuss a situation where rigidly applying solid principles might not be ideal? All right, so let me answer this question. Applying solid principle too rigidly can lead to over engineering. Not always, but yes, sometimes. For example, creating too many interfaces for a simple application can unnecessarily complicate the design, right? It is important to understand here that balancing is the only required and must be used factor here. So it is important to balance between applying the design principle by knowing that is it necessary to apply or keeping the design pragmatic way is sufficient for your use case, for your context. That's why even though we will say that uh, nowadays things are changing, generative AI comes, AI engine already uh, replacing many things, but still I believe that human brain has some capability which, is, which can't be replaced. To, and that is the taking some kind of decision which is not intuitive which is uh, definitely, definitely taken based on the analysis which they are doing at runtime. That's why after so, so many things happening also, software architect role is very, very meaningful in any project, software product development company. And that's why taking some decision which is more re related to your context is very, very important. So I'm just wrapping it that taking blindly design principle in your code, in your context is not required. You have to balance it 
and to check that does design principle will help me in the longer run or pragmatic design or a simplest pragmatic design will work in our context. And once you take decision, document your decision on what basis you have taken what approach, right? So that in future, if somebody realized that this is not sufficient to solve all the problems, all the scenarios, then they will definitely, definitely go for different approach, which is more realistic and more relevant at that such scenarios. Thank you for your thoughtful responses. It's clear you have a strong grasp of solid principles and their practical applications. Thank you. Thank you for completing this video. And I hope that you definitely have learned something which will help you in your system design interview. Hope to see you in next video with new concept and skills needed for the system design interview. By then, keep learning, keep improving, and keep sharing your knowledge.